theme because one natural solution to flooding could be the beaver. There are apparently lessons to be learned from the rodents' ability to build flood defences, actually flood defences to help us. Uh, Louise Ramsey's from the Scottish Wild Beaver Group and, and joins us now. Morning, uh, Louise. Good morning. Just tell us what the beavers do. Well, beavers build dams and they complicate and slow down water. They, they um, braid the, the streams and they will block ditches um, and on our land we have um, we have some between, something between nearly 30 dams on a quite small acreage built by de- beavers and they're holding back the most enormous amount of water that didn't used to lie on our right. land. Now the, the complicated thing and I'm not an expert on this is that you you can build dams upstream and then you obviously slow the water downstream yeah. but you then yeah. get more flooding upstream and the point is yeah. that the yeah. the upstream area is better place for the water to store than the places downstream generally speaking the upstream Mm. area will be a better place to put the water you'll have lots of little pools in the in the in the uplands um and you've got the water coming more slowly down from the uplands into the low ground and it'll um really you know if it was multiplied right across the catchments it could really have a significant effect on reducing flash floods. Mm. I'm not, and beavers can't solve this problem no, on no, their own. No, of course not. No, <laughs> no. I mean, because obviously, if there's once the the top is all saturated, then the next bout of rain is going to bring water downstream as well. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but the, it will. The land will hold forty times as much water in the presence of beavers. Four zero. Yeah, in in the right in the right kind of context. Yeah. 40, and, 40 times as much, yeah. And that's just because of the damming? Yeah, the, yes, combination of, of damming and canal building and, um, yeah, but mainly damming. Goodness that. Now, just tell us about your scheme, because you're talking to us from Dundee, but you've got a... Effectively, beavers were brought back into Scotland, and uh, so you've got a yeah. scheme with what? How many? How many? How many beavers does it take in your well, area to make well, a difference? Well, in, in the in Tayside, there are now um, roughly 200 beavers living right across the Tay catchment. I mean, this this happened um, accidentally in the first instance, but it's now a situation that's being monitored by um, a government body called the Tayside Beaver Study Group. I see. And it, it really has made a difference, you think? Well, I think it's beginning to. I think it, it the, there are certain places where it's making a significant difference. And there are places in England where the same could apply. I mean, there are areas, uh, there's, in Pickering, for example, there's a project which would enormously benefit from the presence of beavers because they're actually building artificial mm. beaver dams. Well, look, forget the beaver. We, we could do it ourselves, presumably. If the beavers can do it, we can do it, right? Yes, I mean, yes but we, d- we don't have to pay the beavers wages. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they do it for nothing. <laughs> Louise Ramsey from the Scottish Wild Beaver Group, thanks. Well, there's pictures of flooding in southern England have, have been dominating TV news bulletins in recent days and one suggestion to protect property in the countryside is the use of beavers to hold back the floods. But would this work? Louise Ramsey campaigns on the introduction of the beaver to Scotland. They have the capacity to hold water back in the uplands um, because they build dams and create pools and beavers can actually increase the amount of water um, in, a, in a, perhaps an upland woodland by 40 times the amount that... Um, it would be there without beavers. But doesn't that just move flooding upstream? Yeah, but in, in these areas, if it's a woodland in the uplands, it doesn't cause a problem. It just creates nice um, pools which are fantastic habitat for wildlife. Do you think beavers could genuinely help in, in areas that are hugely flooded, like the Thames Valley? I think, I think it would be, um, it could be part of the solution. There are, there are places, I mean, for example, Pickering in Yorkshire, there's a project going on there where they're protecting Pickering from flooding by creating artificial beaver dams in, um, in the streams, in the hills above. And, 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 and also another one at um, Bel- Belford in, um, in Cumbria, in Northumberland, Northumberland where they're actually, um, they're actually co- you know, creating the, the kind of habitat, they're attempting to create the kind of habitat that beavers would build. But beavers do it so much better, and they do it for nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're, they're free. I was going to ask you yeah. then, uh, there are examples out there of this working? Yeah, well, we've got it on our own land here. We've got, um, we've got um, upland land, which is relatively flat. And when we first came here, it was very dry. It had a big, deep ditch running through it, which carried all the water off the fields and from the woods. And we've now got 30 beaver dams. 
And one of them is 100 metres long. One of them is five, um, five or six feet high. And they are holding back huge, huge amounts of water, tonnes and tonnes of water on our land, which wasn't here before we had beavers. And so this will be slowing the flow tremendously. And if this was, the pattern was repeated across similar places in the uplands, it would make a significant difference to what was going on further down in the, um, in the low ground. Louise, you should tell me where you are and when this all started. Well, I, um, we live at a place called Banff. Um, that's Banff with an M, in, near Alice in Perthshire. And we brought beavers here. My husband had the idea to bring beavers to our land um, in the early part of the 21st century. We had, the, we had them here in 2002, and they've been breeding up um, on our land since then. And it so happens that our land is particularly suited to um, this kind of process of water collection by beavers. Beavers in other places um, just live on riverbanks and they get on with their lives. They cut um, willow and things like that and they don't necessarily make dams. And there are, in fact, um, roughly 200 beavers living in the Tay catchment, some of which will be doing similar things to ours and others of which are just having no, no um, particular impact in that way. Because I'm guessing that, you know, up to about 400 years ago, when they were made extinct, there were hundreds, well, maybe thousands of well, these things. Well, there were millions of beavers, actually. And, and in fact, in the, the Somerset Levels was a place where there were enormous numbers of beavers. A lot of uh, beaver archaeology has been done there. Um, and, and beavers had an enormous impact on, on the making of farmland in prehistoric times and, and were continuing to have an impact right up to the Middle Ages. Well, if we look back then, they, they went 400 years ago. How many have you got where you are, and what difference do they make? Well, on our own land, we've probably got about, we've got two or three families, so that might be about 20, 24, perhaps. No, not as many, fewer than that, maybe, maybe um, 15, that sort of number. Um, but in the, um, in the whole of the Tay catchment, there are, um, there are roughly 200 and they're just quietly going about their business and, and making a fair impact? Well, they make, I think that the, the way that they make an impact varies very much depending on the topography. But in, um, in places where upland areas where it's relatively flat um, and there are quite small ditches and streams, they can make a huge impact. Now, obviously, you want them brought into Scotland in a far wider scale, far oh, yes, bigger scale. Like to see them reintroduced across the UK, actually. What's the argument against them, then? Well, they, um, like anything, they have upsides and downsides, you know, and, and the, 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 they're really agents of rewilding and renaturalisation. And I think at the moment we recognise that, um, you know, nature very often knows best, but what we've actually been doing throughout history is to denaturalize. Um, farmers have been dredging and draining and straightening out rivers and digging deep ditches. And um, while this may create farmland, it doesn't, um, this, this, it, it creates a situation which is very uh, potentially unstable, especially at a time of climate change. So um, if you want to renaturalize, beavers are your friend. But if you're trying to maintain a highly artificial um, kind of environment, then beavers can be a bit annoying. But, uh, but surely even thousands of beavers wouldn't affect uh, a, a vast flat land of well, um, well uh, irrigated soil like they have in England? They, it, it, they could have some impact here and there. Most of the things that beavers do can, can be mitigated by human action. So if they put a dam in a place that a farmer doesn't want to flood, um, the, the farmer can deal with that. But um, Farmers are not always over the moon about having to deal with the impacts of wildlife.